Hello there and welcome to our final video in our little series to do with pandas. So displaying data in a graphical format. That's what we're trying to do here. Um, and it's useful for humans because we don't understand lots of numbers very easily. Uh, it's much, much easier for us to look at a graph um, and process that in our brain. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot some data graphically. Now the first thing I'm going to do here, I'm start off with a blank project. So I'm going to import pandas as PD. Now that's normal, we've done that in all our videos, but this time we're going to import something else as well. So matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, that's my reference there. Helps if you spell it right though. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use that to, dis to display the graphs. So matplotlib is a graphical data science package that's just for um, data manipulation and data visualization. So with that, I've got a piece of uh, data here, which is my air quality version 2. There it is. Now what it's got inside, it's got station uh, Antwerp, it's got station Paris and station London. So these are train stations and we're looking at the uh, NO2 level um, at these dates and the recordings of those. And we want to plot these numbers all up in here. And it goes on, we've got about 60 entries there. So that's going to be our data. Now everything's lowercase, separated by an underscore and I've got something called date time. So that's in a date format with the date being day, day, month, month, year, 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 followed by the time. So, back into our code then, what we're going to do is we're going to import the CSV file into a data frame. We're going to call this uh, quality. And I've read it in using pandas, and my name of the file is air quality v2. And what we're going to do is just want to make sure that we can read the data in properly. So we're going to print that out. I spell it wrong. Air quality, there we go. Good, so data is being read in, no problem. Now, what I want to do is, firstly, you'll notice that when that data gets ran, it has um, an index on there. And you'll notice when I run this data, you can see there, we've still got our index on there as well in this column and the date is still in its format. So what we're going to do is first we need to remove the index. Now the reason why we do that is because when we plot graphs we don't want it getting confused with that in there as well. Also in addition to that we want to parse the date. Parse just means put it in the right format. Now I'll show you the difference in this. Now the addition that we use here is we say index underscore col equals zero. So what that's saying is our index column is column zero. Then we parse. Parse dates equals true. Now if you look at this one, what you'll see this time is there is no index, it's missing. And also the date time has been produced in a proper date format. The time has disappeared, so we've just got the raw dates now that we need. And everything's flipped, so we've got year, 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 month, month, and day, day. So it looks backwards, but that's what we're gonna to need to plot on a graph. Now, if you just want a, a quick visual check, we're gonna say air quality, we're using number two, because that's been correctly formatted in clean data now. And we say dot plot, bracket, bracket. So we just plot it to a graph, the default graph here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say um, plt dot show bracket, bracket. Now without that, you won't see any graph. You must show the plot. So plt obviously is the, the reference here to matplotlib. And when we say plot, it sends the data to the graph, then you have to show the graph. So let's have a look and see what we get. So you can see there we have got data, and this is the graphic user interface that pops up. This is the matplotlib inter interface. You've got a couple of options here. You can left click and you can zoom into these, like this. Zoom in, and you can 
right click and drag and zoom out if you want to. You can see the whole thing. You've got a number of options in here because you can configure the subplots as well. You can move the graph around if you want to and change a load of different settings in there. In addition to that, you can reset it. Um, in addition to that, you can go home and have a look at it as it is and you can even save it. So save the image. So you've got all them options. Now these are the default labels that it uses. So it uses the headers as default labels and you'll see that there's no y-axis labeling because I've not given it one, but it's used the x-axis, it's used the column zero. So that's a quick visual check. Now if you comment that out, we're gonna do something else now. Now we need to comment out as we go here, otherwise it adds the data on top of each other every time. So what if we just wanna show the data from Paris? So just like before, what we've done is we have used square brackets to select the specific series, same thing here. And that was in our previous videos. We have a look at this graph. Let's have a look what we got. There you go. So it looks like we've just got Paris's data here now in blue. And you can change that for station Paris, London or Antwerp and it will give you just that set of data. Again, comment that out. Now what if we want to compare? Compare the air quality uh, between London and Paris, okay? Now you're gonna see a different type of graph here. You're gonna see a scatter graph. And on my x-axis, I'm gonna use the data from Station London. So I'm gonna label that Station London. On my y-axis, it's gonna be Station underscore Paris. And I'll change the alpha so it looks slightly translucent in there. Helps if you start if you spell station correctly, doesn't it? Okay, and there you go. So Paris versus London, you can see there a scatter graph forming. Now the data doesn't tell me much because I've not got a lot of data to be honest. So there we are. And you can do things like this, manipulate the data as much as you want. So that's a scatter graph there. We do have different types of graph as well. I'm sick of typing this out, so I'm gonna copy it. What if I just shoved everything into a bar graph? Let's see what happens here. I'm not expecting this to be pretty. Oh wow, look at that. Oof. All the dates there squished in, but that's my bar graph in there as well. You could even use some statistical analysis and you might remember these from GCSE. Well, I definitely did them at GCSE as well. Box plot as well. And you can see the box plot here with the three types of data. So again, it uses the column headers for box plots and it will use the data to show you the sort of median lines and the outliers and the range between them. So not bad. And again, I'm not working very hard to do this. It's just one line of code, which is exactly what this package is for. But what if I wanted each graph in a separate plot? So axis, we'll say air quality two dot plot area. And you'll see the figure size is the window that you see on screen, 12 by four, and subplot, subplots equals true. So you'll see there now, I've got three separate subplots. So when I've got subplots true, that means you'll get three separate ones instead of them stacking on top of each other, which is quite nice to see because you can see the, the slight subtle differences between them. And like there's a peak here where there isn't over here and that kind of stuff. So that's quite interesting. And again, you can, you can change this if you wanted to. So if I put in there four, change that to 10. And you can see now that it just takes itself off my screen, but it's huge because I put 10 in there. So you can change these and customize them as you see fit. Customize them however you like. So that's a plot area. Now, I think for the final one, 
let's do something fancy. So I'm gonna declare two data frames, fig and axis axs, and then I'll say plot plt subplots figure size. So same thing above. Then I'll use my air quality plot the area again. And I'll say the axis is going to be the subplots of AXS. So basically stack them on top of each other. AXS dot set score Y. So we're going to set the Y label to say an O2. Let's do it. Let's do it fancy. Let's Right, so what you're looking at now is you are looking at the stacked on top of each other. You've got NO2 concentration. So you see my dollar signs there for underscore two. That's to make that a subscript. And I've got concentration. I've got my date time underneath. My three pieces of data on top. So I'll get a really good visual of exactly how everything's performing. And what I need to do is, um, I've, the only thing I've not used is fig here. And that is simply to show you how to save. So let's save the image, save figure and call it NO2 concentration dot. Let's make it a PNG or something like that. Run this again. Now, if this is correct, line 37, um, it'll pop up again. There we are. Then if I just open my files here, you can see here I've got now in my directory next to my data, my pan and my Python file, I've got NO2 concentration. And that is the figure. So it saves it as a PNG image for you to have a look at. Very nice. And there we go. That is a whistle stop tour of using Matplotlib with pandas. So pandas is for data extraction, getting all the data from the CSV file. And then matplotlib is to visualize and plot the data. Okay. You can find any data online, any CSV file with data in it, use it and manipulate it and see if you can get some graphs working. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you join me on the channel on another video sometime soon.